sitting here in such gratitude about our new sponsor, Provado Eyewear. Go to provadoeyewear.com and just check out some of the glasses. I mean, I, I'm so happy and pleased and thankful and grateful that Laura, she's the one who created the company. She's in complete alignment with us because she also is about love, light, and levity and adding that to the world. Still standing up with Craig Shoemaker. Thank you, Laura, for being our sponsor. And you all go get yourself some eyewear and you can look good too. I look all right, don't I? I love your eyewear. Thank I, you. I absolutely love it. And I'm not a guy that like thinks much of myself the way I look. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm not a bad looking guy, I get it. But I think I'm kind of handsome with these sunglasses. <laughs> Amazing. You look awesome. I mean, I can actually look, I'm looking at myself here, I'm going, this guy's kind of hot. <laughs> <laughs> I've never I don't, I don't think I ever felt that way and other people are going why is he wearing sunglasses indoors is he Jack Nicholson at the Lakers game we got a great guest today I'm telling you check her out she's with Provado Eyewear which is what I'm wearing right now <laughs> that was my Jack Nicholson impression I haven't done it in years hi Laura Hey, Craig, how you doing today? I'm great. You're the perfect guest for us. I was just stating the intention of this show, of, the, of this podcast. It's live, but we also are recording it for putting it up later so people can download it at any time and all the usual, all the usual suspects, all those other platforms that you can go on and go see the, check this out or watch it, listen to it. And uh, I'm so happy to have you on. I hope that people check out the, the video version as opposed to the audio, especially with you as the guest, okay? <laughs> so. Thank and, you. And it's on my TikTok as well. And also because they can see your eyewear. I have some other pairs here, by the way. Okay, I just want to just wanna bring them out here. And these are, these are all created by you, okay? Now, my kids called these something, and I didn't understand what they were talking about, steamers or something like this? Uh, like I'm operating a steam engine from back in the 1800s. Is that what they're talking about? Is that what these are? Side shield? Yeah. Yes, those are the side shield Noctua sunglasses. I actually wear these when I go golfing because they protect me from all angles, you know? So for me, I wear sunglasses are more than just a fashion statement. They just provide that privacy that sometimes you need, you know, as you discover that everything's energy, you want to protect yourself from those energies out there, you know? <laughs> I, I, I love that you're saying that because I do want to keep talking about that, the association between eyewear, and we're going to talk about how you got there to this place, because Laura, it is about energy. Really, life is energy, and I don't think, that, I've never seen a television show about that, but I've never seen a programming about that. I've never seen the news talk about it, about the general energy that's out there. And it's what's happening is a dark energy is pervasive. So we have ways, you have ways that we deal with that. And one of the, your ways is you created these beautiful sunglasses. Tell us about it. Absolutely. So like I was saying, Craig, to me, sunglasses provide more than just a fashion statement for me. Uh, your eyes are the entrance to your soul. And as we get to know this world and how it works, you will see that everything that is, is energy. So with that being said, for me, sunglasses provide that shield of protection, that privacy that I like. I've always been a very private person and I just like to be private and sunglasses provide that for me. So that's why I created Privado. I'd like to reframe that for you or for me. It's not, I think some people think that they're <clears throat> shy or, it's introspective. And I think we need to be more introspective. If we can get within ourselves, that's what we bring out to the world. So even if you are in a group, you're bringing that energy to the world. But if you're not introspective, you're, if it's everything's about the outsides and how things appear and how, and gossiping and taking people down and all that that's created out there that, negative energy being introspective and with oneself that's what brings you to that higher level of vibration right absolutely absolutely you see i didn't start uh seeing how everything works until i started understanding myself i had to i came, I came to a point in where it was it was it was my pivot point and where i had to look within me to kind of understand what was going on outside of my reality and the more I got to know myself, the more I sat in silence and in the stillness of my soul, 
that's when I truly got to experience, oh, this is why this is happening on my outside. Oh, this is why this happened the other day. Like it's, it, you have to understand yourself in order to understand your outside world. You have to understand yeah. yourself in order to understand others. Because everyone, if you, look at, if you look at the world as a mirror, everyone that comes into your life is a teacher and a student as well. So right. I am learning from you as you are learning from me. And I am teaching you something as you are teaching me something. And that is something that I came to observe and, and find out. And because of this, because of this self-knowledge, now, now I am able to navigate through this world a little bit easier. Yeah. I love what you said. Is it's a reflection of us. Whether we like it or not, it's constantly there. Many of us, you get up in the morning, we don't look so good. I'm not crazy about the reflection, but what can you learn from that reflection? Absolutely. How can you take better care of yourself? For instance, if I wake up and I have like uh, bags under my eyes, that means maybe I'm not tending to my diet. There's always a reflection that will give you an indication of something you can take care of. Not to change the subject, but I want to try this. These are the one glasses I haven't worn yet. Now I want you to re reflect back to me. Speaking of reflection or anybody here, reflect back to me whether these are me. Now I have several Provado eyewear sunglasses here, right? Now these are the ones I haven't done because I didn't connect with them. Because and then this is one where I don't have, it's not introspective, but I'm looking for someone's outer approval or suggestions, or maybe that doesn't fit your face. So I'm gonna put them on now. It's the first time I'm wearing these. So now I have ideas on what these look like on me, and I'm gonna have what's that? I love those on you. You do? Yes, they look great. Uh, okay, I'm not used to it. You know, they, <laughs> they, they, they scream different things to me, you know, from my past. Uh, they scream, they scream uh, a guy that just had LASIK surgery. <laughs> scream a little, I'll be back. The Terminator, I'll be back. Well, Sarah Connor. I mean, there's a little bit of that. But it could be a whole other thing that you're going to reflect back. So that's, these are memes from our past. And a lot of us... What happens is these get set inside of us. And I, again, I'm just speaking out loud about the process that we have on the way we look, on the way we feel about ourselves. And these self-reflections are different than other people's reflections. So it's interesting, you would go, wow, you look great in those, where I'm going, oh, I just had eye surgery and I'm protecting myself from the sun, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I gotta get rid of that. Either that or other people will say, yes, that is what it looks like. You see, and this is something that, okay, so when we come into this earth, right, we come brand new to the earth. It, it's, everything is new. We're learning at a fast pace, as, at a fast pace as a baby. And then we get given this identity, right? We get given our beliefs. Um, everything that society thinks we should be, that's what we get in the, in the mind records that as a program so now yeah. you're following this this uh uh program that society has has given you you got your name you got your identity you got your beliefs that were passed on from your parents from their uh, grandparents and now you're looking at the world but you're looking at it through the lens of what society has placed for you you know what i'm saying so oh i i know i know what you're saying this is why we get along we, we got along right away it's exactly what i teach we are programmed from the beginning Peers, teachers, government, media, parents, programmed, conditioned us to respond to life in a certain way. And our job now, I believe you agree with me, Laura, is to deprogram that. That is, that is the whole purpose. Now you have to, and in order for us to do that, we have to be able to surrender all that programming. We have to, to just surrender to all of it and just remember who we truly are. And in order for us to remember who we truly are, we're going to have to go back to the day we were born. And then who were you then? Who, yeah. who yeah. were you without that identity that your parents gave you? Who were you without those beliefs that your parents gave you? Who were you without um, any, any feeling or any uh, teaching that society gave you? Who were you? You were yeah. an 
infinite soul, an infinite soul capable of anything and everything. But along the way, we gathered all these programs and we said, hey, you know what? This is who I am and, and this is who I, I'm going to uh, to be. This is this is the mask that we put on ourselves. Yeah. And they think that that's us, but it's not. It's what society molded us to be. But in order for us to be who we truly are, our authentic self, we have to be able to surrender that. And that is what I call a rebirth. Yeah. What do you think? I, I'm so in alignment with you. All right, since the moment we spoke the first time several weeks ago, it's a, it's a complete alignment. Again, this is what I talk about when I do the coaching. You know, we have Zoom today. We have a coaching, our little laugh mob. And we're born love, light, and levity, just pure. It's yep. genuine. And, and it's genuine. It's authentic. People, you know, we use the word a lot lately, authenticity. Well, that is what it is. It's authentically who you are born. We're not even born with a name. They they name us, and then we spend half of our life correcting people with their name, you know, or the people making fun. I'm Craig the Egg, and you're Laura, you're Laura, you're Lori. I'm sure you've had gone through all that, right? So correcting people. No, it's, that's how it's, it's not a no, it's an A. Oh, yeah. All that stuff. So that's, that's, that's life. That's life. It was, it's a series of people um, attempting to take you out of your flow. And they do. They disrupt your flow. So we have to have, find disruptors to get back to ourselves, to back to who we truly are. And once in a while, we can disrupt ourselves with fine fashion, which I can't wait to get to that, to what inspired you. And I mean inspire. Inspire is, is spiritus. It's, it's a Latin word for breath. Who, the, the true breath of who you really are is there. And that's what brought these beautiful pieces of art to the world. And that's what brings the comedy that I do and whatever artistic endeavors I'm in. That's what it is. It's tapping into that. I can't wait to get to that, but I'm going to try one more on. Okay, what do you think of these? We're going to have to have a vote, too. I love those. Those are the you Taito. Like what, what are these called? Those are the Taito. I love those. They're amazing. Yeah. They're a combination so you... between an aviator and a shield type of look. Yeah. I'm going to have to have the... I, I can't see all the comments and things, but we're going to have to get to some sort of a vote. My, I'm going to give you my personal vote. I'm, I'm going to go back to these. These are the ones that I that I I can wear and just it just feels they just feel right, you know. See, I, I I'm, as a reflection of you, yeah. I'm, yeah. you you look like you're about to take flight, which you are. There, you, there you go. I, I just like either that. I'm gonna the other one. I'm gonna ride a steam engine from you know. For, for, invented by Fulton, I believe he was the steam engine guy, but I, I just, you're right. Sometimes you just want to put something on to shine your light, just to feel a little, just a little better about being who you are, about revealing the, the, the potential that exists inside of all of us, that we just tamp it down, tamp it down, tamp it down. And I know you went through with something where you were not only tamped down, but at the point of depression which again, I think that you can share this with us. I think that that's how you ended up in this, not only this business, but in this transformational world that you're in now. So tell us what happened to you that was the big, uh, the big shift. Yeah, so I've been facing adversity from the moment I entered this world. Mm. It's just that at the time, I thought that adversity was a negative thing. I thought that life was happening to me. And I even thought, at one point that I was a victim of my adversities. But it wasn't until I started truly knowing myself that I realized that adversity is so necessary for growth. You see, yeah. I started working at the age of 16 and I became a police officer uh, for the state of New Jersey when I was 21 and then I became a detective. I did that for a total of 10 years. My last year I completed here in Pennsylvania, where I moved with my with my family after I married my husband. But that last year on the force, Craig, that was my pivot point. I had just transferred over my career from New Jersey to PA. I had been working for almost one year at this small police department in, in Pennsylvania when I experienced the pregnancy. And it was a surprise pregnancy, so you could imagine how that went. But yeah. as yeah, as soon as I told my chief, he gave me two options to either continue working pregnant or to resign. 
And sure enough, I had to come home that day. I sat down with my husband, we spoke, and we came down to a decision. I chose to resign. The next day I submitted my, my resignation letter and that was it. But from within, Craig, I felt like I was losing everything, everything that I ever worked for, the tears, sure, the yeah. sweat, you know, the mental strength that took for me to get there. I felt like I was losing my identity. It's a source of pride that you went through that. And being a female, let's add that that you're not adding, but that isn't it's typically a female business is to be an officer. Right. Uh, did, did you keep the uniform? No, I'm sure your husband gets turned on by the uniform, right? <laughs> <laughs> Does he make you wear it now and then? <laughs> no, but that's one of the reasons why I married him, because he wasn't the typical, ooh, uniform, oh, handcuffs, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> I left that part out. That was the that was the PG part. Uh, speaking of uniforms, he wears a uniform. Yeah, you know, like, I I always admired the, the football butts, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Now that he's retired, does he ever put the shoulder pads on? Little, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> bring out the cleats and all that. You guys, you guys can have a whole role play. This is fantastic. You drive dressed as a cop. Either that, or you have a good Halloween costume. But his is real. He played for the Giants, right? Just the Giants. Yes, he did. The Hinoceros. <laughs> yes, yeah, the Hinoceros, just blowing through people. You could imagine but our wedding. It was full of cops and football players. <laughs> You're well, you're well protected. That's that's for sure. It was it was amazing. It was a, it was a good time. But yeah, like everybody, everybody said, "Oh my God, you have a room full of football players, and then you have police officers." This is a one of a life, uh, once in a lifetime thing that you say. You know. That is quite. That is quite. I, I'll get. I want to get back to um, what we were talking about, but real quickly, how did you two meet? So we met through mutual friends. Uh, my okay. real estate was his real estate agent uh -huh. um, his name was uh, Michael Ganelli and um, he was also the mayor's son so I had a, a connection there um, with law enforcement and politics and all that but, uh, yeah we uh, went to one of his gatherings at his house and that's when we met oh nice that's awesome so you became pregnant and this was a big uh, we call it the turnaround here on our show because Similar to you, a lot of turnarounds, and I do want to ask you one question: Is sometimes do you like have that talk with Big G, whatever you want to call it? You just go, really again? You're gonna test me again? I mean, that I, that's been happening to me, where I, I, you know, I'm going through some difficult stuff in a personal way with different, very important family members. That just there's this anger that comes at me, and I'm going, really, you know, God, you've been such a good guy, and. Really, another test gone? Uh, it's like I studied for that exam. I got an A, and, and I flunked one. Do you ever think that to yourself? It's like, really, when do I get to relax and not grow? I do, but now that I understand that, so you're talking about speaking to God. I understand now. I have come to this uh, knowledge in where I know that God is within me. Yeah. So anything that happens outside of me now, I can now see that it's me that's creating. That's yeah. God creating something for me that I need to go through in order for me to go to a next level. Whatever that level may be, it's I need that. Yeah. You know, I need to go through whatever <laughs> anger, whatever um, situation, right. obstacle that's that's coming at me because this is God's way of taking me to a next level, to a level that I need yeah. that that adversity or that obstacle i need it at this next level so whatever <laughs> god throws at me i always take it with pride now almost yeah yeah almost like we're gifted but it's like really i don't want any more gifts okay i'm overwhelmed with uh, there's too much wrapping to clean up now i mean it's like we have that gift because you and i do get that but isn't there like some time where you just go, oh, really? It's me again who's got to deal with this. Doesn't it seem, to, now tell me the truth. Does it seem like other people don't go through these things? Like I know people that my friend Steve that I grew up with, he always goes, man, you got a lot of stuff going on. He's nothing, that, like nothing for him. Nothing is in his way. He just lives a simple life and no issues, no therapy. You know, I, I just, do you ever notice that? Or you ever wonder why, why am I blessed or cursed? 
I, I have, but I want you to remember this, Craig. God gives his toughest battles to his strongest warriors. You're a warrior. I'm a warrior. <laughs> And this right. is how you experience this. I know, but I just wanna I wanna put the spear and the shield away just for a little while. Be in the back while everybody else is fighting up front. I wanna be the warrior that just, you know, let's have a little picnic. <laughs> I just wanna this is like children and it's really God you have to have do I always have to grow and change and shift and transform and then pass it on? I know. That's, I just, I, that's why I like you. That's why I connected with you right away is, look, look we're the warriors. And, and people that are listening right now, they get it too. They're warriors as well. Everyone is. It's just a choice, though. It's a choice of how, how you're approaching this life. I was going to call it a battle because it's only a battle if you make it a battle. It's a challenge. And these challenges are met through spirituality, through connection with our highest self, and so forth. Now, so you had a point in your life where you were in the battle, but you couldn't see the peace, right? I couldn't see it. So at this point, when I lost my career, I felt like I was losing my identity. From, from within, I felt like I was losing everything. And shortly after that, Craig, I lost my pregnancy. Yeah. And, then, and then shortly after that, I started losing my hair. I had bald spots, Craig, bald spots. Oh, wow. Do you know what that is for a woman? It's like losing a crown, like your crown. So yeah. I felt devastated. And um, it, it, was a, it was a very difficult point in my life. But at that time, I didn't understand as within, so without. So mm -hmm. everything that I was going through, the lost pregnancy, the lost career, the losing my hair, that was all feelings, all emotions that I was feeling from within. I was feeling like I was losing everything. So it was literally manifesting itself into my reality. I lost my career. I lost my hair. I, I was losing yeah. my, I lost my pregnancy. But you see where I'm, where, what I'm saying when I say as within, so without. Whatever you have inside, whatever you feel you're feeling, you're going to manifest it into reality. Yeah. That's exactly what happened to me. You know, and, and the other thing is that I was keeping all those emotions within me. I was, I was just keeping it within because I didn't want to show my husband that I was weak. I don't want to show my, my little boy at the time that, that I don't, I don't want to show, I, I've never shown weakness because I thought that that was, um, it was a bad weak. thing to do. You, you thought it was weak when it's not, it's strength. <laughs> Correct. I thought that I would, I would be lacking strength if I showed them that I was feeling devastated inside, that I was, I was feeling as, as if I was losing everything. So I kept that emotion within me, but then everything was just manifesting into my reality. And I didn't understand that at one point until now. Now I understand why, why that had to happen. Now I understand that I had to experience that loss in order to yeah. take it to where I needed to go that's where that saying comes if you if you want a new life be prepared to lose your old life that's where yeah. that comes from yeah the, the surrender is the greatest victory describe what surrender means to you i mean i have certain versions of surrenders that have happened for me and they really have been the most remarkable turnarounds i've ever experienced i can never even have imagined some of these turnarounds when you're really in the muck you're really in the darkness and when one thing seems to be happening after another seem like you're being a victim and then it turns around the minute this to me it's surrendering ideas it's surrendering outcome it's surrendering agendas letting go of those things of the way it should be and being a doer i can do this and i can get through this i can be strong and i'm going to show up as opposed to weak not weak, but letting go, being vulnerable. And that's more yeah. attractive to people. And the people you're battling with, now they're not going to battle with you because you're not coming back at them with that energy, that dark energy. They're, they're going to meet it with more dark energy. But if you come really up with a helped. surrender of that energy, a surrender of, of trying to fix things, trying to rescue, that's my big thing. Oh, my God, if I rescue one more person. I had a woman get in my car the other day, homeless, puts her bag in my car. She goes, where are we going to go? I go, what? <laughs> so that's like no I, I literally said to her i'm done rescuing no 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 get out <laughs> I, I can't rescue anymore it's such damage that it does to them and me and everyone around because that's the energy a rescue energy is no good for anyone 
Now, I want to ask you, I want you to define for us through your experience how you have had these surrenders in your life, how you've ended up letting go of so much to get. You end up getting the riches by doing that. So tell us how that happened for you. Well, so when I went through all of that, um, Craig, I went into a a depressive state in where I thought that, you know, how am I going to provide? I've been working since I was 16. Like, and even though my, we were well off. Okay. But my, I felt like, okay, I'm not going to provide a, what am I going to do? You know, I, I I don't want to be a stay at home mom and do nothing. I I mean, it's not, not that there's not anything wrong with that, but just it's in my nature. I always have to be doing something. And, um, can I, can I, I, can, wanted- I, can, I, can I reframe that for you? Yes, absolutely. Creating something. Creating that's, something. That's what a lot of people use the word do, including me, but it really is creation. It's a series of creation after creation. You're tapping into your creator, and that's inspiring you, and it manifests itself in different ways, whether it's eyewear, whether it's a comedy, it's a joke, it's a book, whatever it is. That, can I, is that correct? Would you say that would be a, a different reframe? I absolutely agree no with pun you. intended with Framer over here. <laughs> I re, you refra- you reframe me, and I reframe you. So go ahead. So. I absolutely love it. So yeah. um, when I was in that depressive state, I had no other choice than to just sit down in silence, and then I started listening to this inner voice. This inner voice within me was telling me, "This is not you. Yeah. This is not you." get up and fight. You're a warrior, get up and fight. And this voice that, this whisper that we all have inside, and we all have it. Mm -hmm. We just, sometimes we just choose not to listen to it. But this is our true self. That that inner voice, that intuition, intuitive voice that you have from within, that is who you truly are. That is the the you that's going to tell you what's good, what's right, uh, who your friends are, who your friends aren't. That voice, is the one that we should all be listening to. And so I, I, I heard this whisper and I said, yeah, you're right. This is not me. This is, I, and I got up and sure enough, the next day, just for the nostalgia purposes, I was going through um, this article that came out when I first became a police officer in New Jersey. And in New Jersey at that time for that department, it was like a big thing because I was one of the, um, the first females to ever get hired there. And this article came out Um, of me and on there it was there in plain sight in black and white the reporter asked me besides law enforcement what are your other passions what what do you want to do in the future and it was there Craig in black and white one day I hope to open up a sunglass my own sunglass brand and there it was it clicked I got the idea again and I ran with it and then that's when um, Pravado was born and then from there, I started creating, I, uh, I established the LLC, I uh, researched the industry of the eyewear, uh, of eyewear, and I put it all together in one beautiful package, and this is when Pravado was born. And all, the, all so, this came from a person that was trained to be a police officer. Now, I have a question for you. I've been pulled over before on that turnpike, all right? Next time I'm pulled over, is the cop going to get out of his car and approach my car wearing Pravado sunglasses? <laughs> are you style yeah. you styling out those those police officers and state troopers? Are you, are they looking good in their Pravado eyewear? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Oh, really? Oh, that's awesome. So that's you, you're the supplier of the of the. Or is it state police or local or who do you hey, appe- local? local or state i'm um, here uh for everyone you know for police for just anybody why shouldn't why shouldn't you be pulled over by someone with some style with you know we're, the uniform comes with the uniform but you get to choose your sunglasses right Absolutely, as a yeah. police officer you get to choose whatever you wear on your eyes everything else is a uniform yeah you could wear whatever sunglasses you want did you ever, did you ever, th- did you ever think about that how you chose the one thing that could change that everything else is uniform and in line and in line, you have to be in line with what they tell you to do. But this is the one little rebellious moment where you can listen to the voice inside of you that says, I want to look good. I want to look stylish, even though I'm in this polyester uniform. <laughs> so you want, you want to look good, right? Everybody wants to look good. That's why I'm still wearing the sunglasses right now. I look 
look better with the sunglasses. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So you you went through this thing, and I I, I want to know. The, much of me is about the laughter, the alchemy of laughter, and how that's a that's a really direct connection, like a bullet train to what you would call God or higher power or higher source or. It's a, it's literally, it goes right to there. And you can't be depressed at the same time you're laughing. So have you ever practiced anything to do with um, laughter or finding joy or going to local comedy clubs or watching comedy specials? Have you put that into your, your daily repertoire, your routine, or your semi-daily? Sure. I just saw something the other day. Hold on. I'll show you. <laughs> I'm depressed. <laughs> you, got, you. you got that from me <laughs> that's a, isn't that cool i called the guided laughitation if you can meditate you can laughitate as a matter of fact i have a hard time meditating i just did a, a float the other day oh my god it was awesome this floasis Woo! it really made me challenge my claustrophobia ideas it made me challenge you know that's a that's a challenge too as much as somebody attacking you you're attacked by your thoughts you're attacked by your fears. And I dealt with those fears. I sat in this float tank. I'm going, okay, okay, okay. This is weird, man. What are you going to do? Do I got I to gotta do something. That's why it's hard for me to meditate. And, man, I went into this space. And I came out of it with the inspiration to just text people I haven't talked to in a while and just tell them I love them. Shift the energy, dealing with some difficult people. And I just said, sent love to them, too. No, no agenda, no nothing, don't expect anything back, and I haven't received anything back from any of these people. But I did that to create something that could come down two years from now. They, that person could come back and say, you know, I really appreciated that note, and I was in anger or whatever it is, and you inspire people that way with your own journey, your share of your journey, your own discoveries. So have you had, have you had situations in your life? I love the use of my lapidation, by the way. What, here, let's do a really quick one. Ready? Right, you breathe through your nose okay. and let out a ha. Ha. Oh, I want to hear it. It's got to resonate. Ha. Come on. Ha. Hallelujah. It's a celebratory word. We're going to celebrate here. Here we go. Ha. 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 No, no, no. You're going to you're gonna follow me. Breathe through your nose and let out a ha. Everybody here. Everybody on here. Ha. Open the mouth. Ha. Come on. Let that out. There you go. Ha, 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 ha. Now let out a ha, 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 ha. There you go. Now say I'm depressed. <laughs> I'm depressed. See, you, the smiling and the laughing and the engaging your lungs and your brain, all of your body is on, all engaged. You can't be depressed. You cannot be depressed. No state of depression happens when you're in the laughter state. Very true. You can shift your consciousness like that. This is my calling. Your calling is, is very similar. Hit a surrender point in your life. I'm going to share my surrender with other people, be vulnerable about it, and those people who, who will are, are willing to relate will follow you. And then they, they become leaders too. I'm not looking for followers. I'm looking for leaders. We're going to lead. That's why you're on this show, Laura. You're a leader in transformation in positivity, in love, light, levity. You're a leader. <laughs> even though even though you shut the light out with the sunglasses, <laughs> the light inside oh, look at the light inside of us is always on. It's just a matter of unplugging some stuff. Un just, just discover this this whole self discovery and let that out. This is what I want on my show. This is what I want. I want people that, that share this. Share this wisdom with other people, the discoveries that you've had, the, the journey you've been on. It's an amazing journey. And now you have Pravado Eyewear. How'd you come up with the word Pravado? So Pravado is Spanish for private. Privado. Oh. And that's what eyewear is for me. It's that private shield. It's like I told you, it's more than a fashion statement for me. It's more of a of a privacy thing. I, I believe that your eyes are the entrance to your soul. And when you're able to have these sunglasses on, you provide that shield of protection. Oh, are you, are you, um, what's your uh, ethnic background? You, as soon as you went to, the, you were like the newscasters when they, 
you know, when they when they speak normally, and then when they get to the Spanish part, they go, "El segundo," and it's rainy outside. <laughs> they do. And Alex Trebek used to do it on on uh, Je- Jeopardy when he get to the French questions because he's from Canada. He go, "Louis and Clark took their boat to Je te fais fou, fais fou, fais fou, and they parked it. Anyway, so you did you just did that when you said privato. <laughs> so what what's what is your ethnic background? I was born in Honduras. Honduras. Ah, ah, Honduras, of course. Not just Honduras, Honduras. Yeah. Oh, I, that's so great. You see, we in Philadelphia, we don't do that because we don't like our accent. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a pretty nasty yeah, accent. Show me. In Philly, I'll, 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 pronounce, your, I'll pronounce your sunglasses. You're gonna, you might, like, squirm. This is, our, this is how we talk in Philly. You live in Pennsylvania? Here we go. Hey, yo, did you try them privados? Oh, my God. <laughs> Privado over here. I'm going to put them on my face. I'm going to look good in my Goat Eagles game. And uh, <laughs> come on now. Privado. No one can do it. No one can do it. In the history of film, no one's ever been able to do a Philadelphia accent. You know, that's kind of weird. Yeah. It's true. kind of weird. Now, what part of what part of Pennsylvania do you live in? Central PA. Central. Yeah, well, that's very neutral there. No no pun intended. It's very neutral there. They don't really – they have kind of an accent. Yes, we're um, – so you know where Knoebels Amusement Park is? It's one of the uh, oldest amusement parks. They use very old um, – you know, the Ferris wheel and yeah. roller coasters. Yeah, wood, know, wood. they're wood roller coasters, yes. I'm yeah, those 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 scare me. <laughs> the roller coasters are bad enough, but when you have splinters and <laughs> things like that, uh, the little the the creakiness that just adds to the whole fear. But so yeah, you you live is it Williamsport? Do you live around there where the World Series is? Little League World Series is that around where you are? I live about forty five minutes away from uh, yeah. Williamsport. Okay, yeah. I know exactly where you are. Not the seven one seven, right? Or seven seven one seven. I'm trying to do my gang <laughs> signals. I don't know Symbols. what. Okay, so you got to remember, I'm originally from New Jersey. I grew up in New Jersey. I uh, 201. 201. 201. <laughs> See, I'm a gangster. I'm a gangster, you know. So. Oh, listen. I am too. I I am spiritual. I I see the world for what it is now, but when it comes with somebody messing with my family or me, I go Hudson County, New Jersey on you. <laughs> That's, that, I say the same thing. You know my saying is Oh, here it is. Here's my stickers and T-shirts. I'm stuck between namaste and kiss my ass. I'm just stuck in that place. I love it. Because we we do try to stay in a state of namaste, but nobody's perfect. Nobody does that. Monks, I don't even, I doubt if monks stay in that position. You know, they play volleyball. I'm sure, I'm sure when they get hit in the face with the ball, they go shit or whatever it is. You know, they're the. They, they have to have some sort of a temper. Everybody does. We all have so we're, we're challenged all the time to stay in that serene place, and we can't. And I don't want to. I kind of like to go back to the Philly. You go back to your Jersey chick or Honduras. Honduras. <laughs> I used to sponsor a kid, Wilmer. Is that a common name in Honduras? He was from Honduras. I, we sponsor, Our family sponsored. I wanted to teach my kids a lesson in giving. And he lived with about eight siblings in a hut. And I used to say, write letters to Wilmer, to the kids. So they understood. Not everybody lives like you the, with the you know, comedian salary that I get and all that. Not everybody lives like you, all right? So and these idiot kids, my sons, they would write, you know, I'm in Hawaii right now on vacation. <laughs> It's like, and my father put me in the same room as my brother, like he's suffering. It's like he's telling a kid who lives with, in a shack. It's so, so embarrassing. I used to have to edit their letters because it would all be like spoiled kid stuff. You know, my, my dad took my computer from me last week, you know. But Honduras has, has some difficult times. Have you been there? Have you, have you visited Honduras to see your, you know, I guess, your relatives? Yeah, so... I have, my mom has, um, her sisters that still live in Honduras. Um, but I don't have a close relationship with my mother. I I actually just cut her off completely because, um, it came to a point where she was, my mom just, she could be toxic. And I am at a point in where I just want my peace. I want to be, 
in peace with my family. And I, I, I couldn't, um, I couldn't have her, uh, in this stage of my life. So I, I had to cut that connection. Um, so yeah, I, I went to Honduras this past summer. Uh, we went to the Roatan Island, which is oh a beautiful Island of the coast of Honduras. And, um, it, it was just beautiful. We, we stayed in, um, East West Bay and just there with my family, no visiting family members. It was just us, but I have a vision, a future vision that me and my family are going to be living there in a future. But right now I'm needed here. Yeah. But yes, I love Honduras. Would, would you mind, this is very spontaneous, and I think you trust me enough. Would you mind if we dig into your mom's stuff? Or you could tell me no. Um, oh, I see I fear. I see fear. I see hesitation. Come on, baby. Let's surrender. Let's go there. I have an experience I would love to share with you. You know what? Let's go. Let me put my sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> you might cry. You might cry. Uh, yes. Come on, you baby. See? Come on, baby. We're going for it. What are these called? What What's these sunglasses I have on now? What are these? The titles. No, I, 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 on this, I need you. Even my dog. My dog is 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 piping up here. She does. She knows there's a discovery that's about to happen here. Because old Craigie boy, I work with instinct, and I'm a psychic. I just want to share this. I'm. I don't, I don't want to be sentimental, or I'll just lay it out there. Okay. So I get these hits, and I know you do too. This is why I believe I can be bold enough, and we're we're gonna go there, okay? If you don't mind. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I got. I, mean, I got a real spirit. I got a real spiritual hit, and I'm only gonna share it because it's happened to me, and I know you and I have a lot in common. So we're all we're we're good with that. Yes. Um, we we do have re common regarding <laughs> regarding the mom, and I do not wish for you to be defensive. I just wish for you to just kind of like just. I'll share my experience, so then you can't be defensive. I'm just going to share my experience and how I feel like this relates to everything we're talking about today. The introspection, the growth, the parenting that we had, which conditioned us to respond in certain ways, right? That's what we're talking about earlier. We are conditioned by our parents and things and other things, a lot of factors, but that's the major one. They name us, they, they feed us, and so forth. So. Yeah. One of the reasons why I am willing to be brave enough to share this part is because my mother is one of my deepest wounds. Yep. And, uh, but, but here's the thing. One of the greatest minds in neuro neurology to ever walk this earth, he said, unexpressed emotion never dies. Yeah. It is birthed alive and it will come forth later in ugly ways. Yeah. So this is the only reason why I'm expressing this, but good. good. You know, so I was born in Honduras. I, my mom left to come to uh, United States when I was a one-year-old baby. So when she came here, she came to work. Um, she was here for six years and then she became a citizen. She was able to request us from Honduras. And that's when I finally met her. You see, like I, I knew her as a one-year-old baby, but you don't remember, you know, when, when you're a baby. Yeah. And I felt like I met her for the first time when I was six years old. So being that I lost that, and I see it now with my daughter, I see how, how um, needy they are. You know, they, they want to be close to mommy. They want to just, I'm her, I'm her everything, you know? Yeah. So for me, I can just, I see, I see my relationship that I have with my daughter now. And I, all those, all that emotion just started coming back in where, I asked myself, what was I, you know, when I didn't have my mommy next to me? Like I, I was raised by a maid, by the way, when she came to, mm -hmm. to United States. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it was hard. I, I really ha had a hard time. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, it, it, I, I didn't feel that I had that connection with her, that mother and daughter baby yeah. from, from the stage connection with her. So then when I came here, I, um, you know, I, I, I was happy that I met her, but I never felt close to her. I never felt like I could trust her. I never felt I was able to communicate with her as, as much as I wanted to. And my mom is very, very old school. She had this way of raising us that it's her way or the highway. Right, yeah. You know, she had this old school mentality in where um, she had to be the boss and, 
and um, you know, you, you, you can't disrespect me. And, and it, it was just a lot of that stuff. And, and I, I never, never felt very close to her. I never felt as a, as a, as a, even growing up as a teenager, I felt I wasn't able to express my feelings to her. And I always kept that within me. Um, and I feel that's the reason why a lot of the things that I went through in my life and now, happened. And, because that, and now I'm going to propose to you that there's a reason you're on with me right now. There's a reason you're on with me right now. I will guarantee absolutely. it. Absolutely. There's always be, be, a reason be, for be, it. Beyond what we would normally do in interview questions and what we want to teach and so on. I get a psychic hit on you that I want to share with you. And that is, this is what's really strange is, you know, you're a female, I've never met you, different ethnic background and so on and all that. And yet we're one. We're one. We have a very, very similar background. I could have, I could have already told you what you just told me. So I want you to have an understanding of where I'm coming from is, is absolutely a complete um, empathy, compassion, understanding of who you are, of your, who you are with your mom. Very similar here. You know, old school, same thing, controlling, manipulative. These are the thoughts I had. Not like a mother. Doesn't act like a mother. Other people raised me. She was working all the time. <laughs> Does this sound familiar? How strange is that, right? And yet, wow. be, and yet before you, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to jump to the punchline and I'll tell you how I got there. Before you is a transformed man regarding his mother. Not everybody do I do this with. I love my mother so much that I can't wait to get off of this to go talk to my mom. That's how much I talk to her. I could put her on right now and you'd see. We have the most amazing relationship, and she's the same person in some ways, but in many ways she's also her true self now because I allowed that to happen. That's what manifested by me changing what we talked about earlier. I changed my perspective on her, and hence it allowed her to not be labeled. We were talking about labels earlier too. Labeled her mother. Labeled her Mothers don't do this. Mothers are toxic. She's a toxic mother. She's not motherly. She's not warm. She's, she's, there's some wounds here. She didn't protect me when I was a kid. I was kidnapped when I was a kid. Didn't protect me. You see what I mean? I had a list. I had a long list about my mom, and we didn't speak for six years. I just cut her off. I said, yeah, I've done enough. I've done enough cleaning and healing. I could be at her funeral and have no problem with it. That's what I told myself. So are you, are you willing to, like, is it, am I, are you okay still? Are you okay that I can share this with you? It's just amazing how much we have in common. Like, I'm, I'm, you're, wow. It, it's let's acknowledge it's it. True. Let's acknowledge it. No reason not to acknowledge it. I get it. I mean, and now you, apparently you're getting it too. It's, it's a even though we're completely different on paper, we're not. And by the way, we're all one on the planet anyway. But you and I just happen to have this, you know, this compelling need to grow and transform and, and be, you know, in our spiritual sense and all of that. This all the activities we have that really make us grow and we, we, we get life except for our mom. It's like, I'm good here, but not my mom. And I'm just going to cut that. I'm not going to look for that opportunity for growth. Everything else I will, you know, with the pregnancy or whatever it is, you know, I've you know, lost whatever. I mean, I had a lot of these, a lot of stuff happened, but happened for me, as you said. So what happened for me, what's that? If you don't mind me asking, when when did you cut her off? Was it recent? Was it six years ago from today? Or no, I'll tell you when it was. I'll give you the math on this. So it, we've uh, so ten years ago, I, the behavior was just unacceptable. <laughs> so I said, right. And if I described it to you, you'd say, "Oh my God, she shouldn't even be in your life. That's horrible what she did." You know, colluding with colluding with somebody who was hurting me and hurting the children to separating people and manipulative of, you know, making arrangements behind backs and all this kind of stuff, this triangulation with family. And I'm going, I want the family to be all together. Why would you do that? I had it all, all that stuff. It was in, it was in my head caused more of a wound. And I said, instead of dealing with this wound, I'm going to make her go away. And I was okay with it. Really okay with it. I don't want to do all the talking here, but I do feel like this could be, this could be something that you might, and again, it's hitting my heart. I'm ready for tears sometimes when I do share these things, when I connect with someone on this kind of ethereal level. And I just want to tell you this story really quick. She was, um, 
she was uh, aligned with uh, like I, I would call an enemy. Somebody really did attack me in horrible ways with the worst gossip you could ever. I mean, literally, I could be in jail if this gossip was not found to be untrue. And she kind of aligned with that and aligns with, you know, my sister, who's also another very punishing person for some reason. And it's hard to deal with, you know, and then I feel like alone, you know, the dad was gone when I was born, you know, it's just like, this is a struggle. Instead of dealing with the struggle, I went, the hell with it. The hell with it. I'm a good person. I'm not, you know, she shouldn't even deserve me and these great kids. And then one day, I used to say she never says I love you. I said all these things. Toxic. I get to get this toxic out of my life. And one day I was I was cleaning out the garage, ironically, symbolically, metaphorically, and I found, you know, when you're cleaning things, you always have these discoveries and I found these old CDs from a radio show I did and she was a regular on the radio show from 2005 and hilarious. She had a segment called What's Bug and Barb. And as I'm listening to this, I'm going, "Oh my god, she's hilarious." And we've, I've cut out all this hilarity of my life because she's a quirky person. All those things that we name that we don't like are actually things you can like because it's quirky and it's unusual. It's, 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 she's, a, she's a trendsetter, you know. And so I embraced it. I said, come on in, kids. My wife at the time. And we laughed our asses off. They laughed at her. They don't even know her. They, she didn't even know her grandkids. And that was the day I went, the words radical acceptance came to my mind. I know that voice that you talked about earlier, yeah. that voice was so clear to me. It said radical acceptance, accept her for who she is in this moment, in this presence, without all the agendas of what a mother should be. It's just accept her radical and go for it, man. You can do it. And that moment she came out to Los Angeles and we went to the farmer's market together and she made me laugh. She made fun of her husband who's blind. And he wanted samples and she would tell him, it says no samples, Sydney. There were samples. There were, but she was trying to tell him not to hoard because he's blind. He couldn't read the signs. She says it said, and she's turning to me, going, "Don't tell him. Don't." Tell. And she's hilarious right away. Healed. We love one another to the point we talk almost every day. And by the way, still does the nudges of things that bother me. And oh, here she goes, and I start to fight back, and I go, "Go, go, go back to radical acceptance, Eric Crago." Don't call her the mother. She's not a mother. She's not identified as a mother. She's another person on this planet who I can love. And guess what? She can't wait to see the kids. She, oh, she loves her grandkids who she missed for all those years. They missed that opportunity to know her for, on their level, on how they, so they can experience, not with my agenda thrust upon them and my resentments that weren't clear, my wounds that weren't clear. And I just share that with you, not to tell you what to do, but maybe possibly this could be a voice that now goes inside of you that says, I'm going to heal this with my mom. And that's what I wanted to share with you. I love my mother so much. I laugh with her all the time. I'd put her on the phone with you right now. That's how much I love her and proud of her. And this is the same woman I thought for six years I didn't, couldn't speak to because she's too toxic and was, by the way, if clinically, and if you look at it, was. Not anymore. She still is in certain ways, but now I accept it. And I have fun with it even. She went to my mom's, my dad's, one last thing. She goes to my dad's funeral. And she did her little usual control stuff. You know, I'm not going. Then she goes behind my back and arranges to go with someone else. And all this stuff. You know, I'm ready to argue with her. And I did argue with her. She shows up at the funeral. And this is a guy she slammed every single day you'd talk to her. He's a bad father, bad husband. Da, ba, ba. This was all my, I was bombarded with this. I had no idea who he was. But I learned who he was outside of her and I got to know him a little bit and she she stands up at the funeral this is how whack she is and she goes he was a good person <laughs> I said to her afterwards what is wrong with you she did a whole speech she goes I'm Irish I can't say something bad about the dead Craig and it's so she's quirky she's unusual so I laugh at it and I embrace it instead of going what an idiot you know whatever it's not toxic it's only toxic because I define it to be toxic so I love having her in my life. I just wanted to share that with you, and then I'm going to let it go. I surrender the results, whether you, it impacted you, whether you resonate with it. I just felt the, compelled to share that. Thank you. And I'm so happy for you that your mother – actually, I feel like your mother changed that part of her. She tried to change that part of her when you came, you know, the radical acceptance. Um, you know, I tried just recently – 
uh, maybe two months ago. I tried calling her and I tried opening myself up to her. I tried telling her how I felt and she just wouldn't have it yeah. to the point where, you know, she understood. And then she started, she understood the first, the, the first hour of our conversation. We were on the phone for probably two hours oh. for the first hour. She understood and, and I felt like it was going well. And then towards the end, um, it just turned like she just turned. I, I feel, I feel like she thinks that I'm still that 13, 12 year old that she has. Yeah, she does. Over. She does. Yeah. yeah can you, can you accept that? I, I do accept can, that. Can you accept I it? Do. Can you accept that? That's the, that's the response you're going to get this time. Yeah. Next time, hang up the phone earlier <laughs> when it's on a good, when it's on a good roll. <laughs> you know what I mean? The, it, it, have more fun without the expectations. This is the thing. I, I try to limit the expectations from her. It's so simple now simplicity is like how is it happening for you where are the discoveries where's the pain points that you can now you know manage the pain better and go through this in a significant spiritual way that's evolved it's you evolving i i'm going to be bold enough to tell you this laura my new friend i'm going to be bold enough to tell you this is going to be the greatest thing that's ever happened to you is your discovery with your mom you're not going to cut her out she's not toxic that's a label. I'm going to be bold enough to tell you this. You might hate me, and I don't care. <laughs> I, I, because I know that you have so much love in you. You have absolute beautiful spirit in you that wishes to shine. And in that case, it shines infinitely. It doesn't shine for just for certain people. And that includes your mom. That's true. And that I, true. I, I hope you understand, and I know you do, at the bottom line of it is we, we, we practice these things in everything we do, not just limited to who we choose, who receives it the best. I'm going through hell right now with certain people. My response was, I had attacks on me the other day. I mean, bad. And I went, Rawr! you know, we go, Philly, you're not going to do that to me. It's a, you know, somebody really close to me. And you know what I did? I just, I just went, damn it. <sighs> Breathe, check in. And out came love. And, not love in return or anything like that. Oh, what am I saying? Actually, one of the people I texted says, I love you too. Now, that's not expected. And when we're embroiled, threats, law, you know, law, I'm bringing lawyers, harassment, all this stuff. You know how you get tough? What about letting go? What about surrendering, which we talked about earlier? You know, with surrender, we are the warriors of surrender also. And that's what I'm unsolicited i'm so sorry if it's if it didn't go the way you wanted it to go huh I needed to, hear this. I needed to hear this because it was so hard for me because in that last conversation and this is where i needed to just separate myself from her because i felt that this is not what i needed in my life but as you're reminding me that to surrender to yeah. to uh, accept her for who she is. Yeah. So that last conversation it ended up her telling me and, and, and I was super peaceful with her, but she kind of rambled off that I was a mistake. Oh, <laughs> you know how painful that is? <laughs> like stabbing me. Right. I, I love her so much. And for my own mother to tell me that God told her that I was, um, I was no good when oh, she, when I was in. Oh, yeah. You know, listen, sweetheart. This is beautiful. I'm sorry. Oh, no, say you're sorry. This is so connected for me. I'm so happy you're getting here. And I'm sorry that that's, you know, I'm sorry about that pain. This is the rooted pain that we have from a parent. It's rooted. Like everyone else, we can deal with other situations in life. We can deal with, you can move on. You can do anything. You can even attack them back. You can sue them. You can, so many opportunities to do certain things. But with our parents, this is the deepest, deepest wound. When I'm letting you know the alchemy that took place is it's now not only, it's not, it's not a deep wound anymore. It's a deep healing. Yes, it's a, it it's the deepest healing I've ever had in my life. I couldn't help but share it with you. I really can't. I apologize to anybody who thinks they're in for a comedy show here. I'm a comedian. And, you know, oh I mean, the expectations. What's that? 
I said, let's get back. You see, like I, I can jump from here to there. Never mind me. See, this is this is something that I needed to let go. Um, I, I know. I, it's so fantastic. It's a, anybody can comment here. It's so beautiful to watch this. To me, I think that this is what we need more of in life. I really do. I think we need to challenge ourselves and be okay with our tears and our sadness and our wounds and our and get into these spaces of healing and hear from one another. I hope that me sharing that with you might instigate something in you to get introspective where your sunglasses that go deeper <laughs> you know what i mean that's what they're there for the provado sunwear is so, so, so sunglasses i wear where you can get into yourself and into that what you're manifesting is happening with your mom too it just doesn't go for everyone else i manifested the, that stuff with my it's a suffering is a choice i manifested my own suffering with my mother it will never happen again. And I'm telling you, we did argue with the, you know, with the funeral thing. When my pa dad passed away a few months ago, we argued, and I went, oh, come, come on, Craig, do your... Ah, oh, there you go. It's, you're okay. And I'm a big boy, and she's a big girl. She's not my mother right now. She's another human being on this earth who's also wounded, and I have empathy for her wounds and herself that she won't, she won't help herself. Let that go, too. Let it go that she's going to be this way for the rest of her days, probably. Well, I could say almost definitely. The habits are there. Certain people are willing to challenge those habits. You're one of those people. I'm one of those people. And maybe some people here are listening and watching, and they now they will challenge themselves. I don't want to live like this. I don't want to live in resenting my mother because I can't pretend that I don't resent her because I've got a list of stuff that she's done, and I'm going to comp keep compiling that list instead of compiling a list of ways that I can heal this thing and be free and surrender. Make that list. This yeah. is all off the cuff, obviously. And I just wanted to share it with you. I'm compelled to share it with you. You're such a beautiful person. And you created this beautiful eyewear. You're on such a journey. You're an example for your children yourself. And this is one more example. I can be an example for my children who love Nana, by the way. They never would have experienced it if I didn't come over. They love her. Let them love, you know, even she could even be better with them than she was with me. I got to be okay with that. And is, by the way, way more generous with them, way more involved and stuff like that. That's okay. It's just so beautiful what I experienced with my mom, though, these laughs and this joy. And we, these, you know, we make fun of people, <laughs> which is fun. You know, we, we agree on certain things. Find the things we agree on. Forget the things you don't disagree on and just move on because she's so stubborn. She's going to fight me on this. Oh, 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 I don't need to be Philly and fight her. I'm never going to win. Surrender. Anyway. That is true. I just got to go to one of the comments by Mel and Nicole. You're here to break the cycle. That is very true. Yeah. I, I know it. It's, it's within me that I am the curse breaker of my, my family, my ancestry. I know that they chose me to, it, it ends with me, you know, but at the same time, what you're saying, Craig, I think, um, I do have to just let go of all that. And I'm really good at that. I'm, I'm the type of person that, um, I let go of things very, very, very fast, except for my mother, my mother, her, her yep. actions, because I held her in such a high standard and yep. such a pedestal yep. that I expect more from her yeah. um, as a mother, but I have to understand that she was operating from whatever she was raised as, you yeah. know, she was operating from her teachings yeah. and I have to understand that I have to let that go. And, um, I'm going to try, I'm going to try again to just, I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop you again. <laughs> Take out the word, try, you're just going to show up and be you. That's it. Right. You be you. You're a beautiful essence. You have an unbelievable potency inside of you that is so creative, and you're spreading this joy throughout the world, and there's no exceptions. So that's what I would say is, oh, I'm not making her an exception, but why not to her too? Why not look at her as, wow, I, she could heal with me as well. Like, give her that gift. And, and, and get out of the expectations. It's not going to happen the way you want it to happen. My mom didn't, like, get right in line and go, hey, this is amazing. But my mom has actually said, I love you. She says, I love you. I claim that she never did. I used to think that she was, a, I used to have labels, man hater. Hates my dad, hates me. I'm a reflection of my dad. I look like my dad. I had all this stuff. Oh, yeah. 
She was never there for me. She's a narcissist. She just cares about herself. She doesn't care about me. Oh, she would say anything mean. She would do things behind my back. I had all those lists. And by the way, they could still exist. <laughs> they could still do the same stuff. What am I going to, how am I going to, how am I going to do that? Am I going to accept that or run from it? Run from the opportunity for my growth. That's the choice. The choice, the choice is the voice. The choice is the voice. I just made that up. I'm going to make a (laughs) t-shirt. You talk about the voice earlier. I can say this with no qualms. I love you. I love you. I think you're an amazing person. I'm so happy you were the guest today. And let's go, let's go buy some Provado eyewear out there, folks, because it really is. As you've seen, I've tried four pair on here. I still got to get a pair of eyeglasses where I have to figure out what frame looks good for my eyes, like for eyeglasses. Even though my eyesight, even at my age, I'll be older tomorrow, by the way. It's my birthday tomorrow. I will uh, – I love, I just love wearing your eyewear and I love how it was inspired, how it was created and, uh, and how you were created. So let's, let's, uh, let's honor that. And, uh, I hope, I hope that you had a nice exchange here today with me as well. I did Craig. Thanks for having me on the show and thank you. Thank you for supporting Provado. Um, you are an amazing reflection and thanks for everything that you have taught me today. And I love you. Ah, oh, thank you so much. See, it doesn't have to be sexual. Or, you know, your spouse doesn't have to worry or be threatened. <laughs> you can love one another. It doesn't matter who it is, you know what I mean? I want to bring love and laughter to the world. That's it. And some more light, you know? And I hope that happened today. Hey, by the way, I did promise people we'd do a shout-out. Why don't you pick one of the people we're going to shout-out? You can read it right there. We're going to shout somebody out, okay? Laura, you pick somebody who's on there. And we're going to shout them out, and then they can write in what they want us to say about them. You, okay, you, you, you got somebody there? Just yeah, for, how you, about... Uh, okay, so let's go with, with uh, Mel and Nicole. She's Me- still here? <laughs> Mel and Nicole. It's, uh, th- what, uh, what, uh, her name is Melon? Mel? Or I thought it was Mel and Nicole, like a couple. Oh, maybe it is. I don't know. <laughs> Shout it out, Mel and Nicole, or, you know, you know who you are. Shout it out. What do you want us to say about you? Well, there you go. Mel and Nicole. Are they, are they there? Anyway. Melissa. What's that? Melissa. Oh, it's Melissa. Yep, I'm here, she says. Yep. Hi, Melissa. Anything you want to promote? Uh, you want to say something about your business? You might want to, you might, might want a man in your life, a woman in your life. What do you want? Whatever you want to shout out. You might want some more spirituality. You might want some coaching. You might want something. You just say whatever you want. You want to brag. You want to boast. You want to say what your program is. What you, whatever it is. You go there. You got a chance right now, Melissa. Mel and Nicole. Oh, oh, I see why you said that. I loved your convo today. You two are amazing. That's what she says. All right, that's what you want to shout out. We'll take it. <laughs> so, it's a reflection yeah. back. It's a reflection back to us. Okay, that's that's being reflected back to us. Amazing time today. Thank you so much. This is what my this is what I want the podcast to be about. These discoveries of life, uplifting people, elevating them, and hopefully they were today. And go get yourself some, some Provado eyewear. It's so beautiful. And you are too. Thank you, Laura. I don't know how to get off of here. I'm technically challenged. That's one thing that I don't think that will ever get better. No matter how much surrendering I do. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever be. All right, we're gonna go. All right. Have a good one. See ya.